Hey guys, and welcome back to a, another video. If you haven't seen some of the more recent tutorials on my channel, I just did like a Thanos particle dissolve tutorial. I'll leave that linked above if you wanna check it out. And in that tutorial, I pretty much just covered how to create the effect because that's what we were doing. And a lot of you guys asked about a little bit more in-depth information on particle systems in DaVinci Resolve. And that's what this is. This video is gonna be a pretty in-depth sort of overview of how the particle systems work in Fusion inside of DaVinci Resolve. So we're gonna cover like all the different emitters or what they sort of do, all the different sort of like settings that you can tweak. And so hopefully you can kind of watch this video and then go away and start creating your own effects. So if this sounds like a video that you're interested in watching, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video. And then, um, yeah, I'll leave, there'll be timestamps down below and I'll leave sort of like a list here of if you wanna sort of skip to certain sections and you know, watch different parts. And yeah, basically we're just gonna jump in and start going through how particles work in DaVinci Resolve. All right, here we are in DaVinci Resolve. We've got our Fusion Composition open. What we're gonna do is open our effects library up and I want you to here go to Tools, Particles, and just have this open. Now we won't be covering every single one of them, but the important ones that you're gonna to want to use. So to create any sort of particle system, we need two nodes. We need the P render node and we need the P emitter node. Okay, and then the P emitter connects to the P render. So these are the two main nodes that we will use to create a particle system. Something important to keep note is that the only nodes that can go in between these two are the nodes that start with a P. So anything in this particle tools palette here. No sort of 2D nodes, anything like that. Effects can go in here. They can come after the renderer. So anything in between here has to start with a P. The first one we wanna talk about is the P render node. So this is the one obviously that renders out the particles, gives us our final image. And the first thing you wanna do when creating any sort of particle system is jumping into the inspector for the P render and deciding if you wanna output it at 3D or 2D. You will know that based off of the project that you're working on, whether or not it is 2D or 3D. But that is the first thing you're gonna to want to do. Now. If you connect the P render straight to a media out node, it will default to 2D because the media out is a 2D scene. If you do have it as a 3D, you will need a 3D renderer node. So we can have this here and you can see we have it as a 3D particle scene. We press play, we can see the particles start to come and it is a 3D scene. And now because we've selected 3D, I can't connect it to the media out because it will need a 3D renderer, which under the 3D tool, renderer 3D, add that in and then we can connect that to our media out and then we have our particle system as such. For the sake of this, we're gonna switch it to a 2D and we can just connect that straight to the media out and we'll just leave it at one viewer for now. So we now know that we can have a 2D or 3D particle scene. Let's just have a look at some of the settings in the P renderer node. So we have a few different options here. So we have the scene, which is going to be the overall scene in terms of how big it is, we can like move it left and right in terms of where we want the particles, that kind of thing. We can rotate it, not that that's gonna to do too much at the moment, but we can rotate it around. We also have controls, basic sort of rendering controls so we can blur the nodes. You can see as if we zoom in there, maybe reduce the blur a little bit, you can see the particles kind of blur in and out. We can also give them a glow if we wanted to give them a glow. So that's something we could do as well. And then we have the blur blend. So we can have a stronger blur and then we can just slowly blend it in. As you can see, like if we had this right down here, it would be quite strong if that was at 100%. So we can just sort of control it this way as well. Honestly, it's I don't really touch a lot here in the renderer. Maybe a bit of glow here and there. A lot of the effects that you're gonna use are gonna come from the emitter and all the things you put in between it. But good to know that you have these controls here as well. Another really important one here is the pre-generate frames, but we'll touch on that in a little bit. So that's the P render node, arguably one of the least important ones when creating a particle system. But the P emitter node, this is the important one. This is the one that's going to cover everything you want to do with your particle system. So we're gonna split the P emitter node into three sections. We have the control section, the style, and the region. Now for this one, we're gonna start with the region. Pretty simple, the region of a P emitter is where the particles come from, okay? The region that they come from. Currently it's set to a sphere, so it's this little circle here. And you can obviously move this particle system around, all right? 
you can change it. You can change it to a cube and you can have a cube and then you can obviously control the size of the cube depending on how, you know, where you want your particles to come from, okay? You will know based off of the scene what you want the particles to be. So if you're gonna create a little sort of, I guess, a fire, you'd probably want a sphere, okay? Because because the particles are coming from a smaller area. If you wanted to create sort of like a bokeh effect and you have sort of like bokeh balls flying around, then yeah, maybe you want a rectangle and then you would just increase the height and the width. And then you have all these particles floating around. I know it could be quite hard to see on the screen here, but you'd have all these particles flying around. So you will know when you create it, but this is the region, okay? And you can have it be anything. You can even plug an image in. So another cool thing is if you go region and you go bitmap, and all of a sudden nothing exists now because we've told it that we're gonna use an image to control the particles. But if you do notice, we get this little little triangle here for the emitter, for the region bitmap. And we can pretty much, we can literally chuck a bit of text down there. And we can write particles and we can plug this in to there. And now you can see that we have our particles emitting from the text. And you can literally use any sort of image. So any image that you wanna download, you can use that for the region. So that's the region. That's literally really all you need to know. It's pretty simple stuff with the region. So now we're gonna move and have a look at the controls for the P-emitter. And as you might expect, this is the tab where you control how the particles behave, how they react, all that sort of thing. And the first options you get are pretty simple. You have the number of particles. So these are the amount of particles that will get generated. And as a particle dies, then a new one will emit. So, it's, so currently we're set generating 10 particles for every frame. The more we increase this, the more particles are generated per frame, okay? So we can slide up to 100, but you don't can't cap it at 100. You can just double click on there and you can type 1,000 and et cetera, et cetera, and keep going. Keep in mind that the more particles you add, the slower your system will slowly get. And you'll notice that whenever you change something, you'll notice with the P render node, it will get like a loading bar. So if we drop that right down, and yeah, you can increase this by as much as you want. You can have as many particles as you want. The more you use, obviously the slower the computer. Number variance. Now the key with making a particle system look realistic is using variance because life is random and it's not perfect. And that's why you need to add variance to pretty much everything. So the number variance is just going to basically change a percentage of how many particles are made every frame ever so slightly. So rather than, you know, a thousand particles appear every single second, it's going to change it so that, you know, it'll be, I think it works out at one, if you have this set to one, it works out to, you'd have like 10% more or 10% less every frame. Uh, it's weird the way it works, but just play around with it. The more you increase it, the more variance there will be obviously, and you can play around it's kind of hard to see at the moment. Now, lifespan. And you'll notice that every sort of parameter with the emitter is gonna have a variance adjuster. You really wanna play around with that. Sometimes you can go a bit too far with it, but the more you mess with the variance, the more realistic it will look. Now, the lifespan option here is how many frames a particle will stay on the screen. So currently it's set to 100. So for 100 frames, that's how long a particle will last before it disappears, all right? But because we're generating a thousand particles every frame, it's pretty much, you know, once we started generating them, you know, it gets pretty full pretty quick. However, if I drop this lifespan down to 10, 10 frames, and then the particles disappear, you notice quite a drastic change all of a sudden. Now we don't have that many particles because every 10 frames, we're having the first 1000 particles die off, but we're having new ones come in. So we're capped and we can literally, we can drop that right down to two frames and then Again, now it gets busier and busier. So you can see we can create quite an interesting effect by doing that. And again, on top of that, we have our lifespan variance. So increasing that is going to give some particles a longer life and some a shorter life. So play around with that as well. Now the color, we're gonna touch on this one here when we look at the style, okay? Um, position variance is going to be basically where the particles are. And you know, by increasing the variance, you can see we sort of scatter them a little bit but they're all sort of generating from the center. Uh, currently we haven't added any sort of movement or anything like that. And as we move it in and out, you can see it kind of as such. And then we have our distribution methods. So currently we have them all at the same time. We can change this to be randomly distributed. You can see it sort of changes it. It makes, I honestly don't really play with this one too much, but you can see it does add when you go randomly, it does make it look a little bit more jittery. All right. Now we move down to velocity. So velocity is where we're actually gonna give 
it's you know exactly what you think it is. We're gonna give it some movement. So by increasing the velocity, all of a sudden the particles are gonna shoot in a direction. And I think by default, it's to the right. Yes, so you can see as we increase that, the particles shift to the right. And if I press play, now all the particles are moving to the right. And that's because they're basically getting generated from the sphere and then the velocity is pushing them this way. Again, we have a variance slider. That's pretty self-explanatory. You can see as I increase or decrease that, some particles stay back, some go further forward. Depends how we want to do it. Next, we have the angle. So this is gonna control the angle of the velocity. So currently it's set to right, but if we change that to, you know, it's a degree, so we go 90 degrees, it's gonna go up, okay? And now we can have it shooting up. And then if we were to go 180 degrees, obviously it's gonna to go to the other side and you can have any kind of method in between. You can just sort of play around with it and shoot it in its direction. Again, we have angle variation. So, you know, the larger the variation, the crazier it kind of gets. And then we have angle Z. So this is gonna be a weird one, especially in a 2D scene, but basically it's gonna rotate in front of the camera. And I'll see if, what I'll do is I'll increase the, um, the lifespan so we can see more particles. As I move the angle Z, you're gonna notice it kind of move in front of the camera. All right, it's kind of weird the way it works. Let's actually reset this one. And it kind of, now it's like shooting towards the camera. It's sort of like imitating 3D space in a 2D scene, which is kind of cool. So yeah, you can have crazy effects by fiddling around with that. And again, we have the angle Z variance. Now it's starting to look very trippy. Now we have the rotation and the spin. These ones refer to the actual particles themselves. So we haven't really played around with the particles currently, we're just using the default one. The rotation and spin are controlling the individual particles themselves. It's not gonna really show you anything. Currently they're just dots. So if I spin the dot, it's just gonna look like a dot. So that will, I guess, bring us on to the next one, which is gonna be our style tab. This is where we control how the particle itself looks. And the particle currently is the point. So these little white dots and we can change the color. So if we wanna change it, we can change it and make it red. All right. And now we have red particles being emitted. And this is where back on the controls where we were looking at the color, we've got use style color. So we can actually have it use the style color here or color from region, okay? And basically the color from region would be if you're using like an image or you've got text or, you know, when we're talking about the region, how you could plug text in. If you plugged yellow text in as the region and then you go use color from region, then your particles will be yellow. Hopefully that makes sense. For now we're gonna use style color and you can play around with all this sort of stuff. So you can, you know, you can even change the variance of the particles, which is crazy. So then you can have different color particles coming out. It's pretty, pretty cool the way it looks. You can also change the way the particles interact with each other. If you were to have, say, another image on top. So we're gonna just leave it at that for now. Let's change the style. So currently set to point. Uh, one thing to keep in note as well, when you're using particle system, very rarely do you use sort of like the set styles they give you like points or blobs or anything like that. Quite often you will bring in images or something like that to use. So we can go blob and give it a sec to load. And now you can see you don't really get a huge change, right? But a blob is, it's kind of like a little sphere, I guess. We can change that and we've got end gone. This one's gonna take a while to load. And you can see here that it just creates a bit of a larger particle. Again, I don't really use end gons. The important one here though is a bitmap. As we're talking about with the region, you can use an image as your particle. So if, and you'll notice here now that we selected that, we get another little arrow. So we have our region one selected and we also have our style. So if I was to import a image, let's get this fire image, drag it down into the scene, all right, and connect that to our um, bitmap particle style, give it a sec to render. Now we have our fire coming out and it, it, you know, it looks kind of weird. And that's currently because we're using the, so we're using the style and we've colored it red. But if we were to change this color to white, then it's not gonna tint it and it's gonna be our more traditional color. Um, and then if we reduce the variance on all of these, then we have our fire coming out like so. So you can see hopefully by looking at that, you can actually create some really powerful effects. So what we're gonna do is actually bring this, rain this in a little bit. All right, and we've played around. Now you know how you can change the region of where the particles come from. You can change the color of the particles. You know, you can bring images in. This is the general gist of how particles work. 
And again, you, we can go back and add our blur, but now we can start bringing in things called forces and that's under the effects library. And that's, uh, let's go to particles. And that's gonna be a lot of what else is in this area. And we're not gonna to touch on all of them because there is just a lot in here and I personally haven't used them all, but a good couple to keep in mind are the turbulence one and the directional force. These are really cool ones to play around with. So directional force is going to basically, imagine it like a gust of wind, okay? It's going to control that. So if I connect the directional force and we just drop it in the middle here, all of a sudden now the particles are actually shooting down, but that's just because it's set to minus 90. That's the direction the force is going. So if I was to set that to positive 45, now the velocity is shooting up and then the directional force is shooting at 45 degrees. All right, and we can increase or decrease the strength of it. And you can see as we do that, the particles start to go back in their normal direction. So if we had strength at zero, the particles will go straight up. But then if we go 0 0.03 and then you know, they're gonna start going off in the other direction. We can obviously do our Z depth as well. We're not really gonna get much of that effect there, but that's gonna be a directional force. Now, a cool thing to keep in note is with the directional force, you can almost get rid of the velocity um, by making velocity zero. The directional force is still going to push it in the right direction. We're just using a force to generate that. However, if we were to turn the velocity up and say we wanted the velocity to be in a different direction, let's go 180 degrees to so the opposite direction. Now it's gonna create a weird effect because the directional force is pushing it this way, the velocity is shooting it that way. And you, it's sort of, you can sort of see here that the particles are kind of coming this way, but then the directional force is pushing it that way. So that's the directional force. Gust the wind is the easiest way to think about it. You just control what way it's going to push the particles. And then turbulence, if you wanna think of this, pretty much like if you're on a plane, turbulence. When you're on a plane, it's bumpy. That's pretty much what this is going to do. So if we drop that in now, and you can sort of see a little bit here, what we're gonna do is increase the strength. Now we have the strength on the X, Y, and Z, X being horizontal, Y being vertical, and Z being sort of in and out. Um, so if we increase the X, you can start to see it start to split a little bit there, increase the Y as well. And then if we were to play this back, now you can see there's a little bit more variance with this, you know, it's kind of coming out and it's going in and going out. And if we increase the strength a lot, you can see now it really sort of starts to shift out a bit. All right, it starts to look a little bit, I mean, it's a weird sort of particle to use, but it looks a little bit more natural, I guess. Another good thing to note here as well is if we go to the peer meter, as I was talking about before with the rotation, we can now control the rotation of our particles. So I can spin them in whatever direction I want so if I wanna spin them in that direction, now we kind of have like a little fireball going. And then we have some cool ones, like we got the bounce. So we can put the bounce in, and if we were to move the bounce over here, so basically with the bounce, we get this line, and this line is going to kind of act like our wall. So if I put that here, you can see the particles kind of, it's kind of weird, but they get shot towards it, and then they bounce off it, all right? And we can, um, so you can see like you can create a cool, a lot of different types of effects and the bounce one is good if you've got like a floor plane. So you could like drag this and just create like a floor. Now it's not gonna affect these particles at all, but if you wanted to, I guess, let's say with the emitter, let's go to a negative velocity number. Now they're, they're gonna go in the other direction, but then they're gonna bounce off the floor. So you can see now they're sort of getting shot in this direction and then bouncing off the floor as well. And we can control that and we can increase the elasticity and it's gonna bounce them further off that line. So yeah, that's um, I guess a lot of the particle tools that you can use and sort of how they work together without going through like a tutorial. So hopefully you sort of found this interesting. I guess before we go, let's just play around a little bit and I'll show you, let's get rid of this. We're gonna change the peer meter. We're gonna go style, we're gonna go back to point region i'm actually going to change the region to a line and we can make this line go let's do this all right let's just have a look at how the particles are operating so they're kind of like shooting over like so so it's not too bad what we're going to do is add a directional force uh, p directional force and we're going to actually yep that's exactly what we want we want the particles to shoot down 
Now let's increase the amount of particles. Let's just go to like a thousand. So now we have the particles kind of coming out almost like a waterfall one would say. Cool. And let's actually really like, let's long lifespan. So they're always on the screen. And let's go 3000 particles. All right, and we're gonna go a little bit of a lifespan variance, a little bit of a number variance to sort of mix it up a bit. All right, very good. Let's do the velocity. Kind of shooting down a little bit. We'll increase the variance a bit there. So I don't even quite know what we're making at the moment. So let's do that. And we'll change the color. Let's change it to like a nice sort of green. All right, and what we're gonna do with the turbulence is increase the X strength a bit. Cool, all right. And then we'll increase the density of it a bit. There you go. There we go, starting to look a bit better now. Cool, and so just playing around with a lot of these different tools here, um, sort of created this sort of like wand effect from like Harry Potter where the particles kind of come in and they're sort of dripping down like so. Um, the way we did that is literally just with the ones we talked about. So we're using a P emitter, we're using the line emitter. So it's just emitting from the line. And we played around with some of the tools, increasing the lifespan on some, just sort of trying to figure out the sweet spot. And I think it's starting to look pretty cool. And then we have a bounce. So we actually have a bounce at the top here and that's just to stop particles from, I guess, coming over the top of the line. So we're just going to do that, helps that off. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And then with the P renderer, we just created a blur. So obviously the more you blur it, the less sort of noticeable it is. So kind of trying to figure out where the sweet spot is for the blur, which I think is around about there. And then we can just like literally increase the glow as much or as little as we want, depending on what sort of effect we're after. But it looks pretty cool. And now we have our two particle systems, kind of like a Harry Potter effect. So yeah, hopefully that sort of covered up a few things on how to use the particle nodes inside of DaVinci Resolve. So there you go guys, that's just sort of like a breakdown on how particles work inside DaVinci Resolve. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this one. I'm definitely gonna reach out to you guys a lot more and sort of see what you guys want to, I guess, get on the channel in terms of content, but yeah, until the next video, guys, see ya.